Guys, Roland here. Now, is it possible that life is eternal, beautiful, and perfect as it is? I mean, I could tell you what I think, but I think it's better if I have this conversation with this amazing guest you get to meet right after this. Welcome to Conversations with Roland, where the goal of this show is to learn life secrets through diverse experiences. I am your host, Roland Achenjang. Guys, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Roland. As always, I am super excited to record these conversations and today is no different. Today with me is an amazing guest who is a technology project manager, a father, a husband, an author, and an NDEer. And what I mean by that is he had a near-death experience. He, along with his partner, cataloged this experience in his beautiful book. It's a best-selling book, The Place Between Here and There, A True Story. What's unique about this is it's actually kind of a shared death experience. And if you listen to previous conversations, I've talked to guests who have had similar experiences. But my guest absolutely is a fan of spiritual conversations, which we're about to have here. And it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Steve Weber to Conversations with Roland. Steve, welcome. How are you? What up? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing this time with me and, uh, and having this discussion. And I, I really look forward to sharing with your audience. So thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Conversations like this really what I call get me going. It's really <laughs> nice to learn from people's experiences and then uh, use that as a benchmark to improve our own experiences. So I'm excited for this. Oh, that's awesome. All, all set to go. Thank you. Thank you once again. Yeah. Now, Steve, I was able to listen to the audiobook version of your book. It's a wonderful book. And I mean, in this conversation, I want us to dive into certain topics that I picked up throughout the book that were fascinating to me. And for anybody who is listening, I invite you to actually take the time to get a copy of the book or the audiobook, or if you care to, watch previous conversations and interviews that Stephen has had along with his partner, Catherine Plant, who is not with us today, uh, with other you know guests or with other uh, show hosts. Fascinating stuff. Definitely worth the listen. So, yeah. Yeah, Ron, I want to I want to mention uh, something about that and about the book and uh, sharing it with uh, with people in general is, is that, yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's it's a book that we made uh, to be about real life. It's not about, you know, a lot of, you know, and in the past when people discuss spirituality, often they go such so far in the clouds that it's tough for one to relate to. But this is a real life experience that we share with people. And, uh, you know, the book is called The Place Between Here and There, you know, and you may cry during it and you certainly will laugh, but, but at the end, you'll be feeling great about it. And the reason why I was so eager to be on this show, you had asked me in our pre-talk and, and, uh, and I had forgotten, but no, it was the meditations and, uh, and what, what a big part that's become of mine and Kathy's life. Uh, Kathy spends a lot of time writing meditations and uh, meditations with a purpose, you know, the purpose for yourself, as well as collecting energy from everyone and putting it out into the world is to provide some guidance and a counterbalance to all the challenges that we face. Now, what was really excited me about coming on here and why I reached out to you was the fact of the meditations and it can bring you peace, but it could also channel your energy to really help the experience here on earth for all of us. Man, you're speaking my language, Stephen. <laughs> you know, I love meditation. That has been my path to my <laughs> spiritual awakening. It's something I do every day and it has just opened up so many doors for me <clears throat> and it's helped me understand that you know, yoga is basically a way to communicate with your higher self and bring in these new energies. And as they're moving through your body and rearranging, you end up in these different positions. It's helped me appreciate Tai Chi. It's helped me appreciate, honestly, and you mentioned this, just about every experience you can possibly have on earth. And we're, we're going to touch, we're going to touch on this because 
part of your near-death experience helped you realize this when you were up in what you call the place between here and there um, in one of the, the three distinct you know, um, experiences that you had in that space. Mm-hmm. You saw that your life as a, a technology, you know, working with technology was actually a spiritual experience as well. And when you mentioned that, Many times when people try to bring up this topic of spirituality, they kind of make it go out there when you can just really bring it back to every basic thing that every single person is doing. Um, And I don't know how you feel about that, but I certainly do appreciate it. So (laughs) thank you. Thank you. Speaking my language. (laughs) Man. Okay. So let's do this in, Mm -hmm. in reading your book right at the beginning, you know, you, you, Describe when you had the accident and how you got flown to the hospital. And somewhere in there, you mentioned that luck was on your side. Um, now, having gone through an NDE, what is your current understanding of luck and how it plays a role in our experiences? I think I put luck and coincidences in the same category. I think there's very few of them. And I think that uh, it's, a, it's a divine grace that I've begun to understand there's a divine grace that surrounds us. It's not necessarily to protect us, but the divine grace is to guide us because our experiences are everything here on earth. It's our very reason for being here. And so, and so yes, yes, it's definitely a process. And so, um, so uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's what I want to say about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, now, you co-wrote this book with your partner, so I don't know whose idea it was to pick up this Rumi quote, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I loved it because I have that same quote in my book and I know many people who are on the spiritual path are familiar with, with the Rumi quote, right? There's a space um, where like, b- beyond your ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field and I'll meet you there. Meet I, you there. I so love that quote. It's so beautiful. But so who's... Whose idea was it to put it in? Okay, okay. Complete honesty. It was it was Shawnee's. Uh, Shawnee is uh, is I, I call him my spirit son, but uh, but he's our uh, daughter's uh, 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 fiance, and uh, and he's a big time meditator. And uh, he, he is. He's a young kid. He's but he's well beyond his years. Like some things, he's like this big guru. Other things, he's like a dopey kid. <laughs> you know. You know. It's it, it's tough to reconcile the the, the the two. But but that quote is very meaningful because it's. It kind of describes the meditative state of mind that 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 you know beyond that I'll meet you there. What is he talking about? What is Rumi talking about? Is it a place? Is the state of mind? I could think yes, it's a place between here, but no, the place between here and there that that really isn't the purpose. I don't think. No, no, I think what Rumi is talking about there is the meditative state of mind. I'll meet you there, and that's and that's my interpretation. That's your interpretation. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's. It's, it's really not a place or a state of mind. It's just the expression of unconditional love. It could be right here, right now as well. It's unconditional love. There are no conditions. You might think it's right. You might think it's wrong. It's just, it's just, right? It's, it's neither. Um, it is. So that's, yeah. I feel it. Yeah. Uh, all right, Steve. So your background, you're kind of raised Catholic. And I, I think that that, influence was you know revealed itself in your book because you used the word purgatory and why did you think where you were was purgatory okay so um so when i compared it to purgatory because those of you um who uh let, let me share in the catholic faith purgatory is a place where you go where you're not um you're not in the right state of being in order to enter into heaven yet but but you weren't so so terrible that, that that you would be punished in the way that that traditional Catholicism sees things, and um, and so you would go to purgatory where we kind of like do your time <laughs> and and learn things, and so uh, and so in some ways it was very similar to that idea because that it was the learning part, but it wasn't the punishing part. It wasn't that it wasn't that I was. I was being punished or I wasn't good enough or, or I didn't earn, it had nothing to, to do with that. What, what the place between here and there 
To me, my understanding, it was a natural death process. Your body goes through both a physical and a spiritual transformation to be born. I mean, think about being born, that whole process and the evolution of your spirit and the incarnation of that. And that's a natural process that happens. But so does the death process. And so, um, and so that's, that's what I was experiencing. That, that actual death process where, where I was, I was uh, being prepared to return to spirit. And so that's what the place was. It was to ease that transition, to help guide me from, from being in earth to being prepared to return into spirit. But I didn't die. And I think that is what is happening now, is that because of technology, people who would normally have passed are not passing. And when they survive, they're surviving intact. I was so, so damaged. My back, I had all these these tubes and, and rods in, in my back, even now, all this metal and stuff. You know, it was just so, so close. So, so, so more and more people are going to share these near-death experiences. But for me, the reason why I brought that to purgatory is because it was a place of learning. It was there that I realized experiences are everything. We touched on that a little bit in, in our discussion earlier, is that experiences were the very reason for being here, because it was through those experiences and the multiple life reviews that I was able to learn so much about my life and all the things that happened, not the least of which was some of the most awful things that happened to me in my life were the things that brought me the most bliss during this life review process because I learned so much and all those things that were troubling me, they all made sense to me now. So, so when I said it was a place of learning, it, it truly was, but it was for preparing you to return back to spirit and make sense of the world that, that, that you've just come from. We come to this world in ignorance in order to learn, to experience things. You know, when, when I was in spirit, it was different. It was more like book learning. Here is that you, you'll make mistakes that you can't make in spirit and you see the effects of it and you see what, what happens to it. And so when you get to that in-between state, to that between place between here and there, where you're preparing to return to spirit, that's why the learning is so important. And that's the similarities it was to purgatory. Since, since, since I was a kid, the Catholic religion has changed so much. And, and I am a Christmas and Easter Catholic still. <laughs> and, I, uh, and, and it is a cultural thing because I love going to church. I love the smells. I love the people. I love the, you know, there, there's some rituals about it. I do, I do love them. But, um, but I think now the Catholic church, they, they don't believe in the idea of hell and being punishment and those types of things. It's more of a, a, a more modern loving perspective on, uh, on the Catholic doctrine. And so, uh, and so yeah, so that, those are my thoughts about purgatory. But, but, but my purgatory, it was a beautiful place. It really was. And it made me realize that here's a beautiful place too, even when it's not. <laughs> oh, no kidding. I love your enthusiasm and the way you're expressing yourself and sharing how you felt when you were in these places and kind of the realizations that you had while you were there going through the experience. But there's something you mentioned that I want us to focus on is uh, the idea of coming to planet Earth as a place to learn. And what it sounded like in your explanation was that in spirit form, you learn through theory. And in Earth, when you're here on Earth, it seems like you're, you're learning through actual, you know, experience. It's not just theory anymore. It's not, it's possible that this might happen. You actually do it, then you, you viscerally have this physical experience. Is that kind of the idea that you get? Um, or how best would you describe the difference in learning as a spirit versus a spirit incarnated as Steve Weber. So the, the way you described it, I would say is like step one to understanding it. It, it really is. But, okay. but what I would say is that, let me, let me see how I can explain, is that when, when I was in spirit, like, like I knew things, like I saw, I, I saw, I, I, you know, I couldn't make mistakes because I had a certain level of awareness. I had the awareness of my higher self, not of this current Stevie incarnation, which is a beautiful, great incarnation, just as just as everyone's incarnation is. But 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 no, no. Um, it was more like like 
I was aware of what happened in my life. And by, and by reviewing, going through my life review once, I would experience things that happened to me. I wouldn't be, I'd be a voyeur. I wouldn't be seeing it through my eyes at the time. I'd be like a voyeur, like, like, like looking at my experiences. And what I began to understand is, is that once I was able to learn how to see spirit, I, now I could see why everything happened from everyone else's perspective. And so all of a sudden things started to take on a whole new light. And so things that happened in my life, well, perhaps I was very hateful and blameful towards somebody or to myself. All of a sudden I understood things in a different way because that I was able to draw upon all my life experiences and then use the grace and the, and the brain power, the spiritual energy that I had as a spirit to really take a closer look at that and learn from that. So, so I don't think, it's not like they're separate things. You need them both. You know, because you need those experiences. And, and so each time I went through my life review, when I was done with the life review, my awareness was so much greater than what I started. I knew it'd be a, a tough day, you know, starting it, but I knew at the end I would feel this bliss and this bliss, this desire, this hunger for this bliss drove my, my energy to learn more and to discover more through my experiences. And so, and so yes, one is theory and one is practical experience, but in order to really gain your awareness, you need both of them. And that's the purpose of coming here, to have those experiences. And I think that's the place in the place between here and there is to, is to further analyze those experiences for perhaps returning back to a physical incarnation or staying in spirit and continuing your spiritual evolution, perhaps as a spirit guide or to continue getting closer to being at one with the creator. Oh man, your enthusiasm I'm telling you that stuff's infectious. Oh, so. okay. it's, well, it, I, I feel it. It's it's just such a you know you, you you said it's love, but it is love. But but the energy of love is such an intense thing for me and for us. It's it's like love is like the ultimate intelligence. And what I mean by by, by that is like the warm and fuzzies are just the door. There's just a doorway. And, and I've, just, I've been trying to search for a way to explain how what I mean by love is the ultimate intelligence. But, and I'm just trying to search for something. But I was, I was thinking of a way of explaining it the other night. And I don't, I'm not sure it's going to work, but I'll share it with, 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 Please with you. Please is do. That, is that picture you, you, you had someone you had to take care of. And then, but, but, but you didn't have to take care of them just to make them happy, but you really had to take care of them for them to really attain the reason why they were on earth and, and their thing and all these sacrifices that, that were made. And you want to really be able to steward them. You know, you would want to know everything possible, not just to cater to their whims, but to really be a mentor and a guide, a spirit guide. For this person, what would you do? There's nothing that you would not learn. There's no truth. You'd want to be as close to everything that there is for you to be able to share that and understanding and to be able to guide them. If, what is that? To me, that's, that's, the yeah. that's the ultimate intelligence. That's the ultimate love. You, you know, love just isn't to coddle someone. It's so important to do that. But that's just the entrance to the door. At least that's the it's way just, that Kathy just, and I feel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I love that perspective, right? Because to me, unconditional love is really an acceptance of everything I know about you and everything that I'm still to know about you with no desire to either change it, but just to support it so that you too can see the same in me or in anybody or anything else, right? And the best way to really help somebody is you mentioned this, I think is if you know a lot about them the more you know the more you can help them if you know their weaknesses their strengths if you know their fears their desires now it also opens you up because you're vulnerable at that point if you're sharing this information with somebody it opens you up to be quote unquote potentially taken advantage of but that's still unconditional love because you you're learning from that experience as well and i'm not there yet i'm not gonna lie but it's an awareness that I have as part of why we come to this place too. And so I, I, I definitely relate to what you're saying. Well, um, yeah. I, yeah. 
I it, definitely did. And, and there's a lot there to unpack because there's a lot of great stuff in what, uh, in what you're saying. Um, please share. Please share. And I just, I just think that unconditional love is that sometimes people will allow them to get self in situations that are very toxic because of unconditional love that they have for someone. That's not unconditional love. That's love without the intelligence of love. And so, and so, and so, yes, unconditional love, but you really have to, I think most people, their idea of what unconditional love, I think to really understand at least what, what I feel, what unconditional love is, they really have to expand the way they're looking at something. You, you know, you, you could say unconditional love to allow, to enable someone to do something very destructive. Oh, because I see them hurting, I wanna do something. That's, that's not unconditional love, you know? Love is the ultimate intelligence to be able to really understand them and to provide that guidance. And and you said it in, in the beginning when you're talking about the Kundalini awakening. You know, once again, beep beep beep, calling Steve, speaking my language, and that uh, and that I've experienced so many times in Kundalini practices, people having that Kundalini awakening and having that experience that that spiritually transformative. Oh wow, the tingling that just rises up. I've seen it. I'm, you know, I've seen it, and you know, everything is about that awareness. And so, uh, and so, yeah, yeah. I mean, in my, in my own roundabout way, is that is that yes, unconditional love is everything. But we really have to understand it that we that that we have to use that wisdom. We can't allow people to empower people to do very negative things. But we have to understand what is a negative thing. What really is? Yeah, that's, you know? that's the crux. <laughs> because because I think it all gets gets down to Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. I honor the inner teacher with inside of you. And really what, what, what that is, that's a recognition, but that's also a pledge, a pledge of understanding that saying that, I know your purpose here on earth is to learn from your experiences through your inner teacher. I recognize the inner teacher in you. So so I may provide, provide mentorship and guidance through my example, but I'll never tell you what to do. I'll never cast judgment on you uh, uh, in a sense like like whether your decision is right or wrong for you. I, I may cast judgment about how it affects other people and stuff, but for your path in life, no, no, these are the things. And so, uh, and so yeah, yeah, the, the, the unconditional love, yes, is so important, but we have to really, truly, it's, it's a powerful thing. And we really have to understand what love is to really apply that in the way that 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 I feel it. Yeah. No, it's to a degree, especially here on planet Earth, I've come to appreciate that it's a subjective understanding. It's a subjective application as well, uh, because you will define it within your own realm of how much your consciousness has expanded. And you use the word wisdom. Um, and that struck me because I've had previous conversations with Jim McCarty who is a fascinating um, individual. He and his partners channeled um, and brought in information from a sixth density social memory complex called Ra. But oh, yeah. one of the, yeah, the Ra contact, essentially teaching the law of one. But one of the interesting things with that information that came in was what we're doing here in third density. And I don't know if you were in purgatory, this kind of information was brought to your awareness that there's kind of a graduation and a progression of each soul through conscious expansion. Actually, mm. there was because you had to mentor some little souls. Um, yeah. But anyway, we'll get, I, I digress here. But according to Ra, we're transitioning to fourth density. And third density is not the density of understanding. It's a density of choice. And as best as we can, with our intention, choose unconditional love, which can show up in so many ways. And sometimes it does show up in ways that affects other people in a painful manner. And even us ourselves in a painful manner. Tough love, if you will. Or what we might call evil or violence, in a sense. And when you mentioned, it's not your place to judge the inner teacher within an individual um, who might be receiving messages about the spiritual lessons they chose to learn in this life. And you have no idea what that is. They are walking their path, right? That sort of overarching, uh, I use the word global here, or maybe 360 in a sphere, spherical view of a single experience, 
is not really available to us in third density. And so it's part of the struggle. And what we end up having to do at some point is realizing that we have to build this intuitive knowing, um, not build or reconnect with it and use that as our guide to make decisions that enhance our feelings of what we describe and understand as unconditional love in that moment. Um, so I don't know how you uh -huh. feel about that. But oh, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 that's beautiful. I thought you were going to go, and this is something that I've been uh, critical of myself at times. Sometimes my language is very, uh, I don't know, very common. <laughs> you know, like like I use I use words, you know, uh, you know, very commonly. But but wisdom. When I say wisdom, I often think is that who's to judge how wise something yeah, is and, 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 and how appropriate <laughs> it, it is. And what's more is that is is that you know, and there's no all, all that. Uh, uh, excuse me. It was an old adage, you know, you know, my, my father was, was a nut when I was young and now he's very wise, you know, you know, it's a question about, you know, you know, really, really, he, he didn't change. I changed, you know, and so, yeah. and so, what's, so, so I, I, I acknowledge that point. Yeah. <laughs> I use no, it I just do. as like a, a, a term, you know, meaning, meaning knowledge and, and understanding and awareness. Yeah. No, I, I love it. It's, it's part of the earth life experience. Uh, but Steve, I want to use this opportunity here to create a foundation and it has to do with language because on earth lord knows language is a source of great creation because if we're speaking the same language we can do something amazing but it's a very subjective thing and if you can as best help us understand the difference when you're speaking about spirit your higher self your human self and then it's interesting in the place between here and there, you were able to observe yourself, right? As a voyeur is what you use. So who is the voyeur observing you and then the spirit that is you and then the higher self that is at, you know, at some point while you were in that place <laughs> giving you information. You're making so, my head hurt. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't intend no, to. No, I got it. I, I got it because you had, you, you know, we had uh, thought about that. And uh, wow, that was a great question, uh, you know, about the uh, difference between soul and spirit and higher self and those types of things. And uh, yeah. and so, yeah, yeah the very, uh, very, we, we had to think about that a lot. And um, for First off, soul and spirit. In a lot of ways, you know, I use those terms interchangeable, but mostly I use the word spirit. Um, soul, I've often associated in my own mind to um, to, uh, to to Catholicism and and the Catholic word for spirit. Like like different theologies have different words for spirit. Spirit is that part of you that's forever that that wasn't born, doesn't die, the part that is a continuation of consciousness from different earthly incarnation, you return to the same higher self, the spirit. And so um, so basically the spirit and the soul, and generally for me, is generally the same thing. The soul is more closely aligned to specific religions. Spirit is like a general term to, to define that part of you, that in, that part of you that was born with the universe and, and the all that is. Um, so, so, so that now your higher self, in the in, in the way that that your spirit is always, always part of everything, and I and I can talk for hours about that. <laughs> we skipped a lot, <laughs> but, uh, but 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 your spirit is part of everything, and um, and so, and so, uh, let me just, and, and your spirit is part of everything, um, but your higher self is. What your, what your physical body is here to your spirit, your higher self is, is in, your in spirit. spirit. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the actual manifestation of your higher self in spirit. I mean, the manifestation of your spirit. So, so your spirit is always, always in spirit. And when you're incarnated, just part of your spirit at least my understanding from my experience, just part of your spirit is Stevie Weber. You know, there, there's a whole, whole higher self there that is providing guidance for me. Not, not saving me from hardships, but helping me through hardships. 
and I have spirit guides as well who do the same thing. They're not, they're, they're, they're not sheltering me from pain or suffering. They're trying to guide me. That's why they're called guides, not shields. And, uh, and so, uh, and so, <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, um, and so, yeah, yeah, yes. And, and so that's, that, that's what, uh, what it is. But really, it's the spirit that we're all connected and one thing I learned in that place, once I understood spirit and they taught me to see spirit or they, I use the word they, but there's no they, it just, it just happens. But, but, you know, once I was taught, I realized that everything has a spirit, that the spirit is all similar. And then we all are connected, but we're connected in the way that cells of our body are connected. Each cell has its own life, but together it makes up your consciousness. No cells are what may not be aware of your consciousness, but all those cells make up you and your consciousness. And just as that, each one of our, each one of our spirits, each one of us make up the consciousness of the creator. The creator and the creation are one. We are not two. We were born with the universe. Science and spirit say the same thing, that we're born in a creation, a big bang, whatever you want, want, want to call it. We're spread out into the universe. Your galaxies are born and destroyed and recreated. Lives are born and destroyed and grown and awarenesses. All these things happen. This, this whole thing is played out. So all the energy is used up in the universe. And we come back once again, back to the singularity of the creator and all of our experiences and everything that we've learned adds to the consciousness of the creator, the Akashic record of all that that is. And that's what our purpose here is for. Our purpose as parts of the all that that is to learn and to grow and to raise our awareness through this process of the universe. Yeah. And so and, and so those are that's 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 what I learned there. The spirit is 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 everything so so when, when we say soul or higher self the spirit is is the brahman you can't cut it any lower than that you can keep on dividing but when you're out of things you could always take away something you could always make something smaller what can you divide any smaller it's the brahman the spirit the, the all that is the holy spirit whatever you want to call it it's us yeah no i love that man i'm not going to add anything to it i just keep probing you here because you're worth of knowledge now and i oh. uh, i mean i i really appreciate you sharing thank you i love hey, this steve. opportunity oh yeah thank you so steve um another thing with spirit guides you mentioned and i love that you know there are guides that are not spirit shields <laughs> is do we have here when we're on incarnated this whole idea of negative spirits and entities set to derail us from our path Mm, okay. That's a deep one. I know. Well, it's it's all how you look at it because that there are there are, there, there are people who have who who are working through very very dark things in their life and expressing it to everybody around them. You know, you know or very or very I don't, I don't know how to say it's just such just just they could they, they they could affect everything. And so and so yeah, you, you know, it's not like they're here to undermine you or your efforts. It's that, it's that they're on their own path, and that path may be in direct contradiction to everything that you're on, and your paths cross. And, and, so, and so is that a negative person, you know, undermining everything that, that, that you're doing, or are they living their life path and your paths are crossing? I think more things are like that. I think people, like sometimes when things line up, it's just like, wow, or what, in a good way, or when terrible things happen, it's like, wow, what happened? You know, it's just that I think that I think that everybody's on their own paths and sometimes paths intersect and sometimes they intersect for a moment, a very critical moment, and other times it's it's for a lifetime or or I mean who knows. Who knows? Yeah, and so when you were in purgatory and you were able to review your life and you saw moments like that when paths crossed for you, where you were at mm -hmm. a the catalyst for somebody experiencing negativity. Mm -hmm. Well I guess if it's a path that's crossing where you're you know, your lessons are not aligned. You're both experiencing some sort of negativity. What awareness did that bring to you? What were you able to glean by reviewing I, I, those moments? I could tell you a story that, that I've just come to, you, you know, it's just, it's just something that just happened very recently and I haven't shared it yet. And I'm still kind of, kind of reasoning it out. But, um, but uh, you know, I was thinking about the spirits that I met in the place between here and there, like, 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 met's the wrong word, that, that I interacted with. 
And somebody had asked me a question that fueled this, this, this question for me. They asked me, did I see anybody who was alive there from my life? And at first I said no, um, but, but, but then I thought about it and yes, there was. There was Kathy's and there was this other fellow. His name was Wendell's. This, this, this guy who, who he crossed my life in such a long time ago in computer stuff. And, um, and he, he crossed my, my, my life. And at the time, I didn't know. I didn't know why. And I took special notice of him for, for a whole load of reasons. And then, and then so, so while I'm pondering this and I'm thinking about this, this guy Wendell's calls, he's in Haiti. He's just had an earthquake. You know, he, you know he's, he's, he's this character. He just, you know, I, I was doing business with, with, with him in computers and every six months he had a new business and he was just, he just always, he was like a go-getter and, and you know, he was on like a visa, got kicked out of the country, some, some long, long, long tail. But, but, but he, he talked to me for, for a few minutes and, and that was, was, well, what was it? We, we reminisced, he asked if I could help him with his computer. <laughs> you know, I told him it wasn't something I did anymore. And, uh, and so that was it. But then I remembered, I remembered how they taught me to see spirit. Wendell's was there. He was, he was there. This guy, I hadn't seen him since, since I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen him in like 10 years. And, uh, and, and I hadn't talked to him since, for him to call me out of nowhere. And then just as I was pondering this, and then I remembered he was there. And the way they taught me to see spirit you know, you know that, that was one of the first things that I learned. And once again, when I say they, 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 they there's no they. I just say that. Yeah. Um, is that is that what Wendell's did is I saw Wendell's there, and and he's he, he's alive. But I saw him there, and uh, and so uh, and, and and so he's he, he's a character. He's a jokester. He like speaks French and some other language I don't even know. And he like go, he he goes in and out of the languages when he doesn't want you to really understand what he says. And you know, he's just a character. And so and and so I saw him there, and I said I said Wendell's, what are, what are you, what are you doing? And he starts interacting with me. But the first things I noticed is he hadn't changed at all at all in in, in ten years. And so that was it. And then I saw him again. And then, and then he, he was a character. He, he was messing with me the way he always does. But he was, he was like 10 years older. I was like, wow, something odd was happening here. And then over a period of time, I kept on seeing him and he kept on changing his age. Sometimes I'd see him as a little kid and I'd still be able to notice him. And, uh, and so over a period of time, then he would change into being like, like a woman. Or he would change into being like a like a eight foot tall re- a wrestler or a uh, or a or a ballerina. And no matter as I got over time, I got better and better at at recognizing him. And then I started to not have to actually see him. I was able to like start to see an aura uh, when I when I start to feel his energy. Then when I start to feel his energy, is that and, and he was messing with me the whole time. You know that was it, that that was a torture. I wish I could express it in, in in a way, but he's such a character, and and he was using it to trick me. Like he was playing a game, trying to trick me each time. And then then when I got it, he was like, Ugh. you know, you, you 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 got me, you got me. That that kind of thing. And he was messing with me the whole time. His role in my life was that of a mentor. He was teaching me. So how could that be so? How could that be so? How could he be here? And how could he be teaching me there? Is this, is this really happening or is this a show for Stevie? And then I thought, and then the next thought I had was, was Kathy. Kathy was, was there in her higher self and she was praying. And then there, there was more, into, we, we discussed that in the book. And so, and so I came to the realization for the first time is number one is that really your higher self is always in spirit. It is, just part of you comes down here. And for, for the human experience to learn, you, you, your higher self doesn't go on a hiatus when, 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 when you're learning. And I, and I use the word down, I just, it, it's not down. It's just, yeah. you know, but, but so, so it, was, it was like Wendell's call, hey Stevie, <laughs> he calls me Stevie, you know, you know and, he, and you know, for him to spark all of that, that was no coincidence. He didn't call me out of nowhere. That was all, but, but he didn't, he, his physical incarnation didn't know that, yeah. but it was his spirit. And so, and so who is this person in my life? Is this person just somebody 
or or it, was there a purpose there? So 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 these are the things I ponder. And these are the things that I, I I help to understand better, not only from Kathy and discussing with 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 people who are explorative minded, but really after I come out of a meditation, you know, we meditate a, 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 little, a little bit, it turns on. I, I don't know how to say it, you know, really, I think if people meditated more, the world would be a lot better place if they just knew how. And yeah. that's, and, that, and that's really, and that's really the key. And we, and we do cover that in our book. And, uh, and we're also working on another book called, um, called Lessons Learned in the Place Between Here and There. And we have five meditations in there that, uh, that, that really try to reach out and help people to, um, to not only get in that state of mind, but to direct that energy. And and we were talking now. Uh, why did I, uh, you know, reach re- reach out to you? Is that because of the meditation? Because I really think that that we do have this energy in here, all of us, that we could harness. It's not hokey pokey. If 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 not, it just makes you feel better. But if it really does, yeah. It, if you I'll really admit. can channel that energy, it's worth a try. Because if you fail, you just feel good. Oops. So I just, cre- <laughs> it's funny that you're saying this. I just created a post where I talked about the biggest risk of meditating is becoming yourself, which is also <laughs> the biggest benefit. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Um, you know, what's great about this story you just shared with your friend from Haiti and him being, you know, in the place between here and there where you were is how long after the fact that you're still distilling and, um, coming up with these realizations about all the lessons that were available to you in that time while you were there yeah. which I would love for whoever is watching or listening to this conversation to get this book and listen to it but if you can quickly Steve just go through the three different you know experiences that you had yeah. while you were there the three main ones and what those major lessons were in each one because I, I loved those those were beautiful and I think it would be great for you to share that since Thank that you. was yeah. your experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be glad to. The first experience I call is, uh, I called it learning the language of the universe. But, uh, but, but really, as I began to study and understand this experience, and I started to see other spiritual literature uh, out there, is I began to understand it as you are syncing with the Akashic Record. The Akashic Record being a, a record of all the experiences of all the universe. And we had talked about that, as I believe that to be part of the consciousness of the Creator. But uh, but, but in, in that first place was where I was taught to see spirit. And we talked about how Wendell's was, was, was there and he was teaching me through changing his form to be able to notice spirit. And once I understood spirit, I could began to feel spirit and energy and everything. Then I realized the connected nature of everything. And so all these realizations fed into one understanding and one understanding in this place. So the first place was kind of like spiritual <laughs> spirituality 101, but, but really what, what I've learned it to be called later on is sinking with the Akashic Record. And then, and then the next place was uh, was where I did my life review, and we had talked about that a little bit about about how now now the next step is to is to make sense of everything that's happened to you in your life. You've made some sense of it as you've lived, you know, you've lived and learned, um, but other things you haven't been able to come to terms with. So 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 then I went through this multiple life reviews where I went over and over again. My life is a voyeur, and my awareness raised each time that I kept on doing it over and over again, it wasn't that there was a consciousness beyond myself that was saying, okay, Stephen, you didn't learn enough, one more time. It was that as long as I kept on learning, it drove the process. Same thing in the first place where I was syncing with the Akashic Record. As long as I kept on learning, it went on. As soon as I stopped learning, then I found myself in the next place where I was going through the life review. And then finally, I was in a place where I later learned I was being tested on my knowledge and everything that I was learning, anything I had learned. And, um, and I was put in charge of these kids where I had to teach them a task. And the kids didn't listen to me. They would just, they just, well, whatever I did, they would say, I was like, I see you, you see me, we're watching, go team, bump. No, they, they would scatter. And no matter what I did, and then it was then I was in contact with my higher self. And I stood beside my higher self, and it wasn't that my higher self told me anything, 
But once I was in my grace and I came to that understanding, like all of a sudden things became very clear to me. I realized I wasn't there to teach them a task. They were spirits who had yet to have an incarn human incarnation. They had, they had grown spiritually through many different incarnations, the way spirits are developed through, through being different animals and plants and planets and just being part of different spirits as you're evolving. And my job was there was to shepherd them into their first human incarnation. It was a job I failed at at first because that after I learned all these wonderful things about spirituality and all this wisdom and Steve's a walking guru now and so now I'm, I'm with these kids the first thing I see is a group of dopey kids I don't see really spirits I don't see that they are on their own human experience just as spiritual as I am in every way and just as understanding and and once I came to that understanding everything changed and so then I was able to provide that guidance. And so those were, were, were the three places, but Stevie had his own words for everything. And, it's, and I really didn't fully understand it until one day I was at a yoga festival and this guy, Jai Dev Singh, I'm telling you, this guy looks like, I'm sure every time he goes to the airport, he gets strip searched, you know, he, just, he looks like something I, I don't even want, want to say. And he was talking about this idea about the five blue ethers. And he was talking about how Nanak, he's a, a spiritual spiritualist from the 16th century, credited with the founder of uh, Sikh religion, but, but really the writings, the people founded the religion. He, he, he wrote that. And, um, and he had a near death experience. And, and he wrote about it. And it was that first that first helped me to understand so much about, about that, that, that he wrote of the five blue ethers and that, and that it's a process that your spirit goes through to return and to evolve from, from, from the primordial creation into at one with the consciousness of the creator. And so they go through these five steps. The first step is what, what I was at. I called it sinking with the, I call it the, you know, you know, wisdom of the universe, but really it was sharing my information, everything that I learned with the all that is and understanding certain lessons. So, so they call that the first blue ether. The second blue ether was, was where I was, um, I was, uh, I went through my life review. And then after my life review, I was tested on that life review. That's, that's the third place where, where I'm tested on my life review. And best, and best, and based upon my understanding, and once again, somebody's not judging me, like things just happen. And based upon that is that uh, the third blue ether is that you will either go on to be a spirit guide, to stay in spirit and to guide others, or you would return back to human form to continue to have experiences and evolve. And so, and, and so that, those are the first three blue, blue ethers. And then they also go to talk about five and six and uh, four and five blue ethers, which all ends with you being at one with the consciousness of the creator, returning to the singularity. And yeah. so, and, and so but, but all this is, as I start to understand religious teachings from, from many, many, many cultures, the one common element is that there's a near-death experience, a revelation, and then the writings. And so, and so those, those are the things that really helped me to begin to understand and take a look at my experience and put things to way in the same way that each time I did my life review, it increased my awareness and I was able to do it again. Each time I go through reviewing my experience, my awareness is raised, I mean, in, in a real way. And then when I review it again, like I come to other realizations from, from my awareness as I understand things. So, so that's Stevie's really long explanation, but I hope I answered it. <laughs> You think that that's long. I'm here thinking I have 75 more questions to ask just about this thing you said. So we could, we could really talk all day about this. Um, you know, seeing spirit, is that a gift or is that a skill that you brought into your current incarnation? Brought back? Number two. <laughs> Number two. We, we, we all have it. And then that's what I've come to learn is that by, by Wendell's like showing me all different forms, I really at first how to walk down this path. How all of a sudden you see spirit? Oh, I see spirit everywhere. No, no. It's that you have to walk down this path of learning that, 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 that your inner teacher has to walk through these steps. And so, um, and so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I'm explaining it well, but, but, but definitely to see spirit is that, is that it's, first off, it's an energy and everybody has it. But so now that I could see spirit a lot more than I used to, 
Now, now I look back at my, my life, there were times when I was seeing spirit and I was just, I wasn't recognizing it as spirit. And once you start to see spirit, you recognize it more. And it seems like spirit communicates with you more. It really does. It's almost like once that communication channel is open, the communication happens in a way that just can't be denied, like through signs and synchronicities. Sometimes we, we talked about there, there's no luck and there's no uh, coincidences, you know? It really is, is that so many times it's like spirit really giving you guidance and you just have to open up your eyes to, uh, to really understand it. Man, I'm going to pause my initial train of thought and use this as a sign to pivot and ask you this question. <laughs> now, in your book, you shared the loss of you know, a child, which is a tough thing for any parent. I'm a new parent and I cannot imagine oh. losing my sweet no, baby. No, don't, 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 don't think soon. those thoughts. No, I know, no. I know. No, um, love and my. <laughs> thank you so much. At the same time, it's an experience that somebody is going through somewhere on this planet. It's like, it's something that happens. I'm talking to you. You went through this. Um, and so... Oh, what is it I was going to ask? It wasn't about coincidences. Well, well one thing is... is Dang is it, I, I lost I, my train of thought. I'm so that's sorry. Okay. No, no, I could, I, I could elaborate yeah. if, if, if you like. Sure, if, sure. Go sure, for it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I lost my, my, my son, a beautiful young man, 20 years old, championship wrestler, New York State champion, <laughs> uh, piano, saxophone. I mean, he played the saxophone like Dizzy Gillespie played the, song, uh, played the horn. He was just so great at it. He, he played it like a nut and thought. And I found him dead from a heroin overdose. And, and you know, it, all those terrible things they think of as a parent. And, uh, but one of the things that, that eventually helped me to understand it and understand the meaning, like first off, if I did not have that near-death experience, I wouldn't have understood and been able to cope with losing, losing my, my son. And, uh, and, and but, but, but really, it was the realization that life is eternal and that this place I was at was real. It wasn't, it wasn't like I got knocked on the head or I was in a coma for, for three weeks. I mean, I was, in, I was in it for a long time and I often thought it was like the drugs they gave me and stuff and I always questioned the experience. But when I started to really come to terms with it and really understand it, I realized that my son was really, he was in that beautiful place, the place between here and there. And he was learning and he was growing, he was experiencing all those things. And I think to myself is that I wouldn't go back to a moment before the accident for anything. I certainly wouldn't want to live through it again, but I, if I had a choice of not going through it, no way, I would do it again in a second. I wouldn't think. The only thing I would feel bad about is all the pain that I caused other people. But, 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 but truly is that understanding that really, that it really, I fully understood that, that my son was in a beautiful place and there is life. And we've gone just as I saw Wendell's and Kathy there, I'm gonna see him, but he's not gonna be my son there. He's gonna be his higher self. Who knows? I just, I'm looking forward to that thing. I'm almost like like the big reveal, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I do, I, I'm gonna miss out on so many things, but also there's so many beautiful things out there. And that's really the theme of our book is that life is good and people are good, even when very sad things happen. Because life is about experiences. And like I said, in that place, some of the worst experiences in my life in that place, that, you know, once I understood them, brought me the most bliss. So you really have to keep things into perspective. And so, but, but now that I understand spirit, that spirit can communicate, that now I do see, receive messages from my son. And that brings me a lot of peace. And at first I didn't recognize them. And, uh, but, but then when I first started recognizing them, I started to do the oh wows. Like, oh wow, grandma or someone's trying to reach me. But once I started to put a, the oh wow away and start really drill down into it is why am I receiving this message? Once I started to do that, I started to get very impactful messages that I knew were from my son, Nick. Like, for instance, <laughs> Kathy and I were walking on the beach, and this is in the book. We have a picture of this and everything. And, and, and Kathy was see it, sending healing energy to the world, you know, because of the health crisis we're all going through. And she was praying to St. Germain, the violet flame, and she wanted a sign that St. Germain was hearing her. So she, um, so she asked for violet beach glass as a sign. And this, that's like hen's teeth. I mean, we, we, we hike the beach every time. You would, you, you, you would find the diamond ring way before you would find a piece of violet beach glass. And so we walked all, all day. We couldn't find it. We're leaving. And then we see this happy, you know, Dalmatian puppy. 
<laughs> you, you, you know, jumping around. He comes over, jumps all over us. The owner comes running up and she says, oh, I'm sorry. And we're like, no, it's okay. We, we like doggies and everything. And so I say, so what's the dog's name? Violet. That's and so, time. and so, whoa, yeah. And then, and then, so, and this is a Dalmatian puppy. There's no way you name this dog Violet. There's no way. How does the dog name Violet? And so, and so Kathy didn't get it. She, she still had a, her pussy face on, no Violet beach glass. And so I'm walking away and she says that. And I look at it with clenched teeth. I say, Kathy, your dog's name is Violet. <laughs> you know, it's like, hello, is anybody home? But I said to her, we have to find her. We have to find her. We have to find out why her dog, why, why this sign? And so we found her a few weeks later. Her son died tragically as well as a young man. And she was coping with that as well. And we were able to talk to one another and we became very good friends and we share a lot together. That was my son reaching out to me, her son reaching out to her for that moment of intersection in time, kind of like Wendell's, that moment of inter for us to be there at that moment, for us to share. I thought I was helping her. Uh-uh. It was the equal exchange of energy, like so many of those things. And so those are the things that really, how does that happen? Really? Reason it through. You know, yeah. I'm a computer guy. I'm an engineer. That's why it took me so long. You know, but but like on some of these coincidences, I can do the math. I can do the math. Yeah. You know? So. No, I appreciate that story. And you actually did answer the question that I was, you know, <laughs> pausing my train of thought to ask, which was recognizing when spirit is communicating with you. And I picked, you know, to bring up your son because in the book you discussed that mm -hmm. after he passed away, you were a little apprehensive right to some of the messages that you were getting and thank goodness for kathy being by your side and continuing to probe and that's the way i picked it up from the book um but what you describe is so beautiful and it it makes me appreciate that conscious expansion is literally seeing more of what you're already seeing like you're seeing the exact same things you know i thought when i had a spiritual awakening i'm going to walk around and everything is going to be looking like you know, just that beautiful <laughs> scenery of painting, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I'm, I mean, the computer looks exactly the same, but there's a feeling of knowing, like you said, that there's so much more that comes into it. You're able to appreciate that it didn't just show up here. There was a huge amount of um, energy that's been expended by different people, many of them you don't even know. And all of that energy is infused into this moment that you and I are creating right now, for instance. So, and that's good. Um, and I, I want to highlight this too, that, oh, I, I should ask you to share this. I get from your experience that judgment isn't somebody else passing judgment on you. At least that was your perception. Can you speak more to that, please? Yeah, yeah, and that's really important because that, um, because that, and not even you, you're not judging yourself. And it's not like, like oh, I'm, my consciousness is so high, so, so I'm above judging people. No, you don't judge people because, because it's not effective. It's not the right thing to do. It's not, it doesn't really help your understanding. Is that, is that really, is that what is your progress? What's the, the metric, the metric, the, 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 the yardstick for measuring your spiritual evolution in that place, your attainment of bliss, uh, spiritual evolution and attainment of bliss. You could use those interchangeably, but, 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 but what really, um, drives that, um, let me, uh, let me just think for a second. Um, Help me. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, we, we, yeah, sorry. Um, I didn't want to see, interrupt see, you there. See, see, this is, this is the, the part where, where I tap Kathy on her knee and she looks up and she fills <laughs> the part. So go ahead, tell me. No, I was asking about judgment. Um, yes, because, okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I got it. Yeah. I got it. And so, um, and so, and so, uh, so, so that, that's all well and good. But, but, but as you attain that bliss, is that what drives that bliss? It's that it's your growth. So, so, so how are you judging yourself? You're not judging yourself. The more you feel bliss, the more you're on the right track. It's, it's not like you could say, oh, I did really well, but you don't feel bliss. You're not on the right track. You, you could you, you say, oh, well, I'm the president of the universe. It don't matter. It's not real. You know, <laughs> you, you, know, you, you, know, you, you, know you have to feel the bliss. You could be very critical of yourself 
and prevent you from attaining things, lacks of confidence, or you could be overconfident and not do your homework. There's so many things there. It's like, it's like no, no, there, there is no judgment because that the only metric is your growth and your awareness. And so, like, I've found, like, like you know, you think that people have hate or animosity towards others, and that's what, what, what's the biggest, Afro, you know, uh, biggest affirmity, uh, infirmity that, that, that somebody experiences. No, it's shame and regret for themselves. Mm. That's really the thing, because nobody can cure that. Nobody can fix that but you. And if, and, and if you, you have that blockage, see, that's one of the things about being in spirit. It enables you to do away with the blockages so you really understand why things happen and they make sense. It's when you have that, that blockage of intense you know, regret or, or terrible things that, that have happened. Like, I, I look back at my son and I looked at all the things that, what did I do wrong and all the different regrets. And it really is. And you can look at everything in your life. But, but really, you just have to understand is that, is that no, no, you have to make sense of things. Nobody's perfect. You live, you learn, you grow. And that's the reason for life. You make as much sense as you can here. But if you don't work it out here, <laughs> you're going to get a second chance to think it over. <laughs> Did you get any information about how many times you've been in human form? No, no, no. You know, you know, I never, you know, I, I get asked those questions about like, like, like bigger things, like my whole spirituality is limited to my experience. You know, I, and I purposely don't get involved in other things because I, I don't want to, I don't want to know. I want my experience to be pure from, from that. I mean, I, I pick up things as, as we go along, but, but I'm not gonna, no, no, I have to, I'm still through meditation, through realizations. I'm understanding my experience more and more. I'm not like coming to, to I'm not in, you know, new things. It's that from, from the things that I know about, like, like I understand the relationships different as I learn and grow. And so, um, so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, it, it, it does, way. yeah. <laughs> no, it does. I mean, I've always found it fascinating that we, I don't know if you ascribe to the whole idea that we go through this veil of forgetfulness, right? Where there's a limitation. Oh, you perked yeah. up there. So, <laughs> do you want well, to speak I mean, to that? I, I mean, if, if we're speaking to, to the same thing, I mean, we we, we may not. But uh, but what what I was speaking, how you come to Earth in ignorance, mm. and 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 that your past experiences are are not with you because that you have to learn new. But 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 how do your past experiences guide you now? Not only through your higher self, but it's through your intuition. It's that it, it, it's that you know things. Why why is, why does this come naturally to me? Why do I like this? Like, for instance, I'm the only biker who has this thing for tea and teacups and little teapot. You ever you ever wonder why? What's I mean, up it must with be that? Some, what's up with that? Exactly. <laughs> you I, love, I, love, uh... I, I, I love like soap. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I don't want to say. I can I can say a lot You're of stuff. You're probably like a British aristocrat back in the day. Who, who knows? knows? <laughs> or or I was a servant. You know, well, you know I, I, I had to make yeah. sure everything was nice and neat and prim and proper. If it wasn't, I got, you know, but, 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 but those, those, those are the things you have to come and ing, 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 excuse me. I get excited and then I start stuttering. I hear you. <laughs> uh, I come in ignorance, you know, because that you use your intuition to guide you. You have your spirit guides, your higher self to guide you, not not shield you, but, but but to guide you. And I think that's why, if that's what, what you're mentioning, the reason for coming down in ignorance. But I think that because it's a natural process, some people are seven feet, feet tall, some people are four feet tall, mm -hmm. it's like a variation. And I've, I've sometimes, I don't think all the stuff gets erased or, or you're still connected to it while you're very young. And then as you get older, you start to lose that connection. Because I have, I've had personal experiences with kids saying things to me that, wow, you know, you know, like, like, especially young kids. And, and, and I could see their spirit because I could almost see them as adults. When, when, when I look at them, I could see, you know, that's one of the tips of seeing spirit. Like you could see them in every shape or size they could possibly be. And I could see like, wow, I want to see this person in 20 years, you know, but, uh, but, but, but there it, it is. And, and so nothing's perfect. You know, it really is because it's all natural. At least that's, that's my understanding. At least what I got, I never experienced anything where I felt there was some master hand guiding everything. It was like, it's this brilliant intelligence of the creation that everything works mm -hmm. everything works if we're going to reach up 
after we're, we're done with this, you're going to reshuffle the cards and do it all over again. I think. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have no insight into, into that. And that's really the big question in my mind is is why I could see how how the creator, us as the creator and the creation evolve over time and we become more insightful to what ends. I, I don't know yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so crazy because you just literally answered my next question, which was, you know, after going through all of this, why are we doing all of this? And you basically just answered that. Um, and so, right, we started this conversation to answer the question, life is eternal, beautiful, and, you know, perfect as it is. And you wrote this in the book. And many people, I would say even me, sometimes even now I've, after an, uh, my spiritual awakening, but for sure before, and which was a catalyst for me to start meditating and going down this spiritual path, I was trying to reconcile the dichotomy of planet earth right the pain the suffering the anger the violence the joys and the celebrations like these mm -hmm. two things are just right here in front of you all the time what gives and if if they're here and and somebody is going through the the hardest hardest kind of experience how can i sit here and say huh guess what it's all perfect you know oh, there's there's so much stuff there oh wow wow i mean I, there, there's so much stuff there okay first of all i just yeah. want to pass on this one thing really quick is yeah. that is that um that it's always been at least my criticism i will you know, criticism i'm having difficulty understanding the way the india caste system works and that and that everyone's born to a station in life they can't leave that and that's almost like in my in my and i don't mean this is from me i don't want to anyone <laughs> you know, you know, it's just Stevie just reasoning out loud. Is that it almost seems like like there's almost a cruelty about it because that each one says that, okay, this is their reason for being incarnated to have this experience in 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 that job, in that terrible existence or that wonderful existence, you know, because because they they, they firmly believe that. And so and so it's almost their job to like to like treat them in the way that that they're supposed to be treated for their caste. And it almost you can almost develop almost like a cruelty about it, you know. It it really is. Uh, so so I that's a, that's that's my digression, <laughs> you know. And yeah. so I, I think about that a lot. But but when I when I was speaking to Jai Dev, the gentleman, uh, you know, I talked about for his first discussed the five blue eaters. I talked to him a little bit, and um, and he asked me that that question. He's he, he's a California um, political activist, you know. He he's, he's, he loves he loves to play basketball and rap music. And it's so funny to watch him play basketball in his turban and his long beard. It's like it's something out of it. And, it, and, it, and it's and a kid. He's an American. He's a kid, you know. Yeah. He, I think he's a Jewish guy, <laughs> you know. I bet his name is uh, you know you know Bernie Mountstein or something. But he's a, he's a, he's he's a great guy and just um and so he asked me about how I felt about politics and about in the world like it was really something on his mind and I told him it's just perfect the way it is and his mouth dropped like it was like you know all of a sudden the warm and fuzzies went out of the conversation <laughs> you know and, I, and we really didn't have enough time to talk about it but 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 really is that, is that I don't think you always have to strive to make life better but it's never going to be a utopia. Even when we live in a in a scarcity free society, there's always going to be troubles. I mean, it really is. You, you know, so so uh, you know, why wait to be happy? Why wait to you know, life is easy to be happy? Be happy now. You know, but it, it really is true. But but that's part of the learning of life. We we can't control all these terrible things, and and it is sad. But think about your incarnations. How many terrible things have happened to you? And so many. These are essential spiritual growth. It's not for you not to feel and and help. You have to help. You always have to do what's right. In learning lessons, you don't make yourself, you know, do stupid things and put yourself in terrible situations just because you want to learn a lesson. No, you're not learning any lesson that way. But in the same token, is that is that the world is never going to be an oasis of beauty and love and light. Because that, that's not the purpose of the earthly quick carnation. I mean, it, it may change. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm smiling because um, that was one huge realization for me, right? Mm. Is it's, you're, not, you're not going to create an external utopia on this planet. And I just kind of played that out in my head and came to the realization that if I did come out here and say, this is what a utopia looks like. Let's all create it. I'm going to be crossing paths with somebody who disagrees. And if I push really hard to ensure that my utopia becomes a realization on this planet, I, you easily see how that could turn into violence, a world war, et 
etc. Where people are like, who do you think you are to tell me what my utopia is? And so I feel the same way that planet Earth is not designed for one person to control everything. It can't. That's not what this place is. Um, and if it were, you would not come here. Because if you left a place like heaven or even purgatory where things were so much better, why would you why would you come here to come and, you know, uh, try to change everything when it's already the way it is? You would if you wanted a utopia, you would just stay there. But you know, two things I want to add here. One, you highlighted that you came in contact with souls who had not even had a human experience. And it made me think about the movie Soul, which discussed kind of in a very new, nice way that you have to go through a, a validation or a checklist. You have to attain a certain level of soul growth in order to even incarnate on this planet, which makes me appreciate everybody here. I talk about it in my book right at the beginning when you open it, the epigram. For you to be here right now just speaks to your bravery, your ability to manifest, if I want to throw that word out, and how much soul growth you have already achieved for you to come and play this game to experience in this environment. But well, as part of the ignorance, as part of that veil of forgetfulness, we forget and we may in our minds think that the utopia we already have available to us at all times, it's outside of us, but it isn't. And so, yes, I, I, I sorry, I, I could go out there, but I do oh, believe that. Oh, me too. Uh, yeah. me, me, me <laughs> Life me too. is perfect as it is, but... No, no, it, it really is true. And you did touch on something that I really want to talk about is that, is that when you said about... Uh, about the uh, about learning and uh, being in the utopia, and about you uh, wanting to fix it, and that uh, and that still it's still going to go on. It's, it's like I think there's a big wisdom in a wisdom <laughs> lesson in there, in the sense like for humanity to learn is that is that okay? You would think that that you bring love and light, and everyone's going to accept it. But not everyone's going to accept it. So, so in and of itself has the foundations of not being able to build that utopia. And now, see, there's the struggle. There's the understanding for you to work towards that end. And that really is to, 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 to like we were talking about the caste system. It's almost like they, that's okay. No, that's not okay. Is that we want to make it, and there is the lessons, there is the struggle, there is the ball game. Just don't look at the score. You got to play the game. You have to learn the lessons. And I think, uh, I, I think there's there's a lot of uh, purpose in that. Oh, for sure, man. We're a little over an hour here, and I feel I must invite you and Kathy, and it seems like your whole family mm. because your daughters. <laughs> Fiance, I don't know if it's husband you mentioned. He's into Shorty, meditation yeah. too, yeah. yeah so like all of you need I to come. Him. We need to just have this powwow and talk about Oh, that'd be fun. That, spiritual that would, topics that, of interest. That would be, be a lot of fun. And I would I would really like if you thought it was appropriate for Kathy to come on, perhaps even by herself, and yeah. talk to you about meditation and about about how that came apart, about the way that she views it, and perhaps you could share with her, and that, uh, and that uh, you know, the way she goes about creating purpose in her meditations, as well as attaining your state of mind and changing and channeling the energy. Because this is an idea that's out there, but we'd really like to try to channel it even more to more people to get them to understand is like really the law of attraction. I mean, many people are familiar with, with, with that is that by creating positive energy, you create positivity about you, but it's really the way you treat people. You, you know, it really, you treat people kindly, they treat people in their life kindly, you, you're mean to them, they go home and kick the cat, you know? You know, and it's really, you know, it, 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 it's about taking this this energy and just directing it as, as attracting love and light. And, you know, like we were talking before, the worst thing that can happen is you'll feel better. Oh, you know, you'll feel better. Yeah. No, I would love to. I certainly would love to bring Kathy on, even by herself. We can speak about spiritual topics, um, you guys, and at Thank some you. point in the future. But awesome. Anyone who's listening, I mean, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please take the time to get the book. Um, it's available on Amazon. There. Yep. Mm -hmm. Place between here and there. It's available on Amazon. And then connect with Steve. I'll have links to um, his, I think you're on Instagram. And yeah, but but uh, Facebook and our website. It's uh, between here and there dot org. That's that's a link to to everything. But we have our website. We have YouTube, uh, Facebook. Uh, but but right right now we're working on our our next book, uh, Lessons Learned. And uh, wow, it's just it's just such a you know 
the book is evolving because it turned out to be just, this is lesson one and blah, blah, blah. This is, but all of a sudden, wow, just so many things are just bubbling up to the surface. And I, you know, it's a whole thing about just relating it to our real life. You know, it's about you, you, you could be a guru on a mountain and eat two, two pieces of rice a day and go home all day. But, but for most people, that, that's not the reason for, for being here. It's to, to really experience things. And uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we'll do. Hey, when the book is out, I'd love to have you back and we can discuss that too. Thank you. Your Thank you. So, Thank yeah, you, please Robert. connect with him. I will have links to Steve's website and also uh, where you can purchase mm-hmm. the book on Amazon. I'm um, in the notes section of this podcast and mm-hmm. below if you're watching this on YouTube. And as for me, you know how to connect with me. I'm on Instagram at Roland at Chenjang and my website, Roland at You can get copies of my book as well. And uh, Steve, thank you so much for this time. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And for anyone who is listening, as always, I invite you to create an amazing day. Thank you. Peace. Satnam. Bye, guys, my friend. (laughs) Okay. We'll pause everywhere.